Okay, so guys, today what we're going to talk about, one of my tips is going to be, is deciding which method we can use. Now, factoring, so, uh, completing the square and quadratic formula are all valid methods, all designed to get to the same result. Uh, but uh, not everyone is most appropriate for each situation. Now, we did learn about the discriminant, and one of the things the discriminant told us was the nature of the roots. So if b squared minus 4ac, that part underneath the radical and the quadratic formula, if it's greater than zero and it's a perfect square, that means that that uh, square root symbol will resolve itself and we're going to be left with an integer, okay, or uh, a rational number. That means it's factorable, okay? We're going to get two real rational roots and it's factorable. I'd stop right there, go back and see if you can factor now, if that value is not a perfect square, that means your radical is still going to be left in your expression when you're done. Now, since it's not going to be able to be factored, if there's going to be a radical, then you're either going to complete the square or use quadratic formula. Now, I couldn't put in this note here, but anytime I'm deciding on whether I'm going to do the quadratic formula or completing the square, if A or the coefficient of the quadratic is 1, and B is even, quadra uh, completing the square is going to be a breeze. So go ahead and finish it by completing the square. If it's not, well, you've already calculated the discriminant. Just go ahead and complete uh, and finish the quadratic formula. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. You've done most of the work already complete with the quadratic formula. Now, if your discriminant happened to be zero, you're going to get one real rational root. And since it's real and rational, it's factorable. Go back and factor. If b squared minus 4ac is a negative value, that means you're going to have an imaginary value or a complex solution. So again, you're going to either be completing the square or quadratic formula. Factoring is not an option. Again, complete the square if a is 1 and b is even. If it's not, just continue with the quadratic formula. All right, so let's take a look at uh, an example like this. If I were to do uh, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac. In this case, b is your middle term and a is the uh, quadratic coefficient. We're going to say b is 16. We're going to square that times 4 and then times a, which is 2, and c, which is negative 10. Okay, this is going to give me 256 minus 80. Okay, so that's going to give me one, 176 as my value for the discriminant. Now, 176 is not a perfect square, so I cannot factor this. But when I look back and say, am I going to use the quadratic formula or am I going to complete the square? I can see right now that my lead coefficient is not 1. But what we can do is we can actually go back and divide out a 2 to the entire equation. I'm going to take a second and clear myself some room. I know it's not factorable because the discriminant's not a perfect square. This is going to give me x squared plus 8x minus 5. And like I said, the lead coefficient is 1 and the middle term is even. We're going to complete the square. So we make a little room by adding to both sides. We're going to make a little room. We're going to complete the square, divide this by 2. We get 4 and square it, and we're going to get 16. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. This gives me x plus 4 squared is equal to 21. Now that I have a binomial squared, we can square root both sides. The square root of anything squared is itself. And here we're going to have two values, positive and negative, square root of 21. So this is where the plus or minus square root of something is in the quadratic formula. Now we'll subtract four from both sides and we have our answer. So X is equal to negative four minus root 21 and X is equal to negative four plus root 21. Now we could have done this with the quadratic formula, but like I said, the lead coefficient was one, the middle term was even, uh, completing the square is gonna be a breeze. Now let's take a look at something like this. I don't know if it's factorable, maybe I've tried it a, a few ways and it's just not working out. We're going to do b squared minus 4ac. So b squared, that's 9 squared minus 4 times 8 times negative 8. Okay. Now, this is 81 
minus times a minus, that's going to be a plus. Uh, 8 times 8 is 64. Uh, I have to multiply it by 4. So 64, if I double it, is going to be 128. Double it again is going to be 256. Okay. Now, if I add 80 to that, that's 3, 330 plus 1, 337. So 337 is my discriminant. I can't take the square root of it, so I know I'm, uh, I can't factor it. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep that number. But I'm going to make a little room here because completing the square is not an option. The lead term is not one and the middle term is not even. So we've already done most of the work in the quadratic formula. So we're going to have plus or minus square root of the discriminant. We're going to have negative B or the opposite of B. So negative nine over two times A to A, which is going to be 16. Now, we're actually done. That's as simplified as we can get it, and that's going to be our solution. So quadratic formula was the best in this case. We'd already done most of the work. Completing the square, not as, uh, as easy because we, we'd end up with fractions along the way. Now, I'm looking at a problem like this. Uh, maybe I've tried factoring it. It's just not really working. So again, b squared minus 4ac. If I plug in b, that's negative 17 squared minus four times a times negative 15. So uh, negative 17 squared is positive 289. Okay, now four times 15, that's 60 times four, negative times a negative, that's positive. So that's gonna be 240. Uh, if I add this together, that's 529. And if we remember from our table of squares, 529 is a perfect square. The square root of that is 23. Now, we can jump into the quadratic formula with this information, but what this is telling me is it's factorable. Let's go back and try something a little bit different. Now, if we go, go back and say, okay, maybe I tried 2x and 2x and that wasn't working, we'll just try and factor one more time. So the signs have to be, the sign has to be different, one positive and one negative. And my larger product has to be negative. So I'm going to put the negative sign back here and the positive there. Things that would multiply to 15. Let's go 3 and 5. And then if we do an outside-inside check for our OI method, that's negative 20x plus 3x. That would add to the 17x in the middle. So we factored it properly. And now that it's factored, we can say the value of x that would give me a 0 here is positive 5. And the value of X that would give me a zero here is negative three fourths. Okay. So those are the three methods and how you approach deciding on which is going to be the most effective and efficient method.